What is up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, we're going to talk about a really interesting topic, and that's how weighted balls change the arm stress uh, that's placed on your arm when you throw them. Now, there's a whole bunch of misinformation on this topic. Uh, we'll get into really exactly how changing the weight of the ball changes the arm stress. Go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. Let's engage on this one. I want to make sure you guys really understand how this whole thing works. So we're going to start with this graph. Now, what the heck is this graph? All it is is the stress over time. So uh, this is really similar to what it would look like uh, if you looked at the stress that was on your elbow or on your shoulder when you make a throw. So on the far left of the graph, you'll notice that stress is pretty low. As uh, you start to dip into external rotation with the shoulder, stress is going to increase. It's going to go up, 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 up until you get to maximum external rotation. Then you're going to start to internally rotate the shoulder and stress is going to start to decrease until you finally release the ball and then there's no more stress on the arm. Now, what determines this stress? Because when you know what determines the stress, you can kind of figure out how each metric is really valued. And then when we start to change variables, uh, like we do with weighted balls, it starts to make a lot of sense how the stress will change. Three things really matter here in determining the stress. Uh, one is going to be the weight. Now, the weight, obviously, of the ball, but also of the segments in the arm. So, of your forearm, of your upper arm, uh, even of your torso, things like that, um, all those matter when calculating the stress. Now, uh, once you have the weight of each segment, you're also going to need to know how big those segments are. Because, obviously, if you look at my forearm here, uh, this is the entire lever arm for uh, the stress that's on the elbow. Now, if it was about this long, and we had cut it uh, basically in half. Uh, if it's the same weight but cut in half, the lever arm's not gonna be as long, so it's not gonna uh, apply as much stress to my elbow. So whole point here is just the weight plus the length of the segments is then going to matter. And the last thing is going to be the speed of the movement. So uh, the slower the movement, uh, if you keep the weight and the uh, size of the segments the same, uh, slower the movement is gonna mean less stress, faster the movement is gonna mean more stress, which makes sense intuitively. Now, when we throw weighted balls, what are we changing of those uh, different things that we're looking at? So first one is gonna be, we're obviously changing the weight. So we're not changing the weight of the segments. So your arm's still gonna weigh the same, your body's still gonna weigh the same, uh, but the ball is actually gonna be heavier. Now it's gonna be the same distance away. The lever arm's gonna be the same length. The side of the segments are gonna be the same. Uh, but the speed is also going to change. So uh, if you throw a ball that's heavier, you're likely going to move it slower. If you throw a ball that's lighter, you're likely going to move it faster. Which then begs the question, well, how do we really get a good understanding of what's happening with the stress? Now, in the calculation for stress uh, when throwing a ball, generally the faster movements tend to have more stress on the arm. So the speed of the movements uh, kind of outweighs the weight. So if you were to have a heavier ball, you're going to end up moving it slower, most likely, uh, which will most likely result in less stress. But it's going to be applied for a longer amount of time because you're moving it slower. Now with a lighter ball, generally you're going to have more stress at the peak and it's going to be applied much quicker because the movement is much quicker. So if we take that same graph uh, with a, a normal ball that was thrown with the stress over time, uh, this is what it would look like if you threw a heavier ball. Now obviously, uh, like we just discussed, the peak of the stress is likely going to be lower, but it's going to be applied for a longer amount of time. And this is what that graph would look like with a lighter ball. So we'll see the peak go much higher and we'll see the amount of time uh, from no stress to peak to no stress also decreases. And again, that's just because the speed of the movement is much faster and the speed of the movement is uh, much more determinant of the actual stress uh, that we'll be measuring. So great, uh, heavier balls are gonna have lower peak stresses generally and they'll be applied for longer. Lighter balls will have higher peak stresses generally, and they'll be applied for shorter. But what do we do with that uh, in training? And there's actually a bunch of applications uh, that you can do this for in training. So uh, the biggest one is in physical therapy. Now in physical therapy, you're basically taking a massive step back. You're trying to go from zero back to a thousand, right? At one step at a time. If you've ever been through physical therapy, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so how advantageous is it uh, to be able to adjust that strength or the, uh, the stress curve? Uh, it's super advantageous. Uh, you can pick an implement for an athlete uh, that will uh, slightly increase their stress 
and apply it for a much longer amount of time. Uh, and then you can slowly uh, apply it faster and faster and faster and faster and slowly increase the amount of stress uh, by just changing the implement up. And the athlete can continue to do the same intensity of the throws or slowly increase intensity in throws. Uh, and you can on-ramp them. And all you're doing is it's just giving you um, the ability to change both the time that the stress is applied for and the peak of the stress. It has implications for more than just physical therapy though. Uh, it's also really important to use this when you're training normal athletes. So uh, for example, recently I've been training an athlete uh, who just finished a season. We had a slight little deload because he kind of got beat up during the season. Uh, and then we wanted to on-ramp him to really high intensity uh, throwing stimuli. And the reason for that is because his strength and his power and his physical attributes uh, are significantly above uh, his ability, uh, both mechanically uh, and elasticity-wise within the throw. So um, how we did that was we started with heavier implements and uh, we started at lower intensities, built him up to higher intensities with those heavier implements. And then over time, he was still at a really high intensity because uh, that's what we built him up to. But we slowly made the balls lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter, which what that does is it safely on-ramps him to really, really intense training stimuli that are going to really attack what he needs to get better at in the throw, which would be elastic components as well as... Um, mechanical components. And by doing that, we got him there safely and saw a nice increase in velocity at the same time. So after seeing this information, uh, I hope you guys are going to be able to take a look at uh, stuff that you see online or things that people tell you uh, with a little bit of a different lens. So let's say someone says, oh, weighted balls are more stressful. Immediately, you should ask the question, more stressful in what way? Higher peak stress? Uh, longer time that stress is applied, maybe more work, which would be the area under the curve, which is something we haven't talked about, but uh, just stress doesn't really mean anything, if that makes sense. There's so many different things um, that you can change in the stress. And like I've mentioned in other videos, that stress is what helps you get adaptations in the athlete. So just because something's more stress or less stress or a different stress, doesn't make it good or bad or, or anywhere in between. What you have to do is establish a goal for the athlete. What are you trying to build? What adaptation are we trying to create? Then get them to the point where you can apply the stimulus you want to apply, so on-rep them correctly, and then apply that stimulus, and uh, you'll have to progress that stimulus and a whole bunch of different things once you get there. But really, that's what stress is. It isn't good, it isn't bad. Uh, it's just something that allows you to create these adaptations. If you use it correctly, you can get great adaptations in the athlete. But obviously, like we've mentioned before, if you use it incorrectly, uh, you could just get yourself hurt. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little talk uh, and presentation on how weighted balls change the stress that's on the elbow and on the shoulder. Um, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. Let's have a conversation. Would love to hear your guys' thoughts. Uh, thanks for stopping by.